whilst that day may not be today, may not be tomorrow, and may not be a few releases from now, eventually Wayland will be the only way, or at least the only way without additional work, that most people on Linux use a graphical environment. Yes, there's always going to be distros doing the distro thing, but I mean the majority of people. And I don't know which of the desktops will be the first to fully drop supporting X11, but you can absolutely bet it is either going to be KDE or GNOME. Yes, a lot of the other desktops are working on things, but they are quite far behind compared to those two. And it makes sense, they have a lot of resources. Now for KDE, a distro could at any point choose to make that change. There was even a big discussion about this in Fedora. But for GNOME, making that jump is a little bit harder, because there was one thing they were missing to make that possible. Make it so GNOME could be built without X11 support. From the outside, that might sound fairly trivial to do, but when you have a giant desktop environment project that has been a project since the late 90s that, for the longest time, didn't support Wayland and had the entire system based around X11 because for a very long time, Wayland just didn't exist yet, there's gonna be a lot of things that were designed specifically with X11 in mind, never really with the idea of moving to something different. So it turns out on the back end, it might not just be a simple one-liner change, but it is a change they're working on, and it is a change they achieved, and for GNOME 47, it should be present, because finally, build allow disabling X11, this is on Mudder, and the same thing on the GNOME show. But it's not just these 4 commits here and 13 commits here, so 17 total. There is a lot more work that went into making this happen. As such, there was a tracking issue to get this resolved. Make X11 dependency optional. This was opened 2 years ago, May 13th, 2022. But technically work to get this done had started a little bit earlier. Now it doesn't track every single individual change that was made because some of the changes they make Wayland support better and slightly move away from X11 but are not explicitly moving away in that direction so it's not going to be everything but it is going to be a lot of the major things. Whilst there are no plans to deprecate it anytime soon and at least for the foreseeable future it is absolutely going to be required at least for things like gaming, a couple of applications, and things of that nature, make X Wayland optional. This was done in build allow disabling X Wayland. And this has been present in the code base for quite a while now. This is not a new change. It was merged in January 4th, 2023. So at the start of last year. Again, this is not something that necessarily needs to be done right now because even when we go full Wayland and we don't have the X11 side available, a lot of people are still going to want to be able to use X Wayland. But it is important to have it as an option there, so if a user, distro, developer actually wants to go and disable it and go full Wayland, no X11, no X Wayland whatsoever, they have the option to do so. Next up is move X11 window frames to a separate client. This is another piece of work that has been merged for quite a while, originally being merged right here on December 2nd, 2022. Mutter is still the window manager and is in charge of reparenting client windows into these window frames. The frame windows are however created by this other X11 client. This involves some additional custom messaging between Mutter and this frame's client, and some shuffled messaging between Mutter, the frame's client, and the application's windows to make these frames act as top level, the top level being a window in Wayland. This is still a bit rough though, most notably it misses frame slash content resizing synchronization. I was able to shake a fair amount of glitches recently, so it started to make sense making a draft and see if this approach is worth exploring further. Most of the changes that happen in a project like this aren't really going to be visible to the user. They're more back-end things that do affect you, but you don't actually know why they affect you. Next, we have a GTK dependency in Libmutter. This isn't that big of a deal. 
The problem is that there wasn't a way to use GTK and Lib Mudder without it dragging in the X11 dependencies that GTK has as well. This depended on the prior change we just talked about, along with this PR right here. Make GDK slash GTK dependency specific to X11. This way the dependencies on GTK could be completely dropped if built with Wayland only. So if you build the Wayland side, you don't drag in all the X11 stuff. I would imagine if you build the X11 side, it won't build in the Wayland stuff as well. Next, we have cursor loading. And if you've heard me rant about cursors before, you probably know exactly what I'm going to say. Everything relies on X cursor. Doesn't matter if it's X11 or Wayland, X cursor is the way that we do things. There is no replacement. We could have an entry copy of what we need from X cursor, and GTK4 seems to do a similar thing. Using lib and cursor is not an option here, as it doesn't allow us to get access to the internal cursor type, and rather give us a W or buffer, so we can't share the same code between X11 and Wayland backends. At the end of the day, it also has an entry copy of X cursor. This isn't necessarily going to be an issue, when we fully move away from X11. At that point, then you can very easily do things and disregard what was happening on X11. At this stage though, if you want to retain that old support, yeah, I get it. Now the real direction we should be going with cursors is working towards the cursor shape protocol. This is what the hypercursor format is using and this is the plan for Plasma 6.2. This moves where the cursor rendering is actually being handled. But at this stage, the GNOME devs aren't fully on board with this. So someone brought it up as a merge request. They actually had the code here. And the problem is until Mutter supports it, then they don't want it supported in GTK. And nobody is interested in getting it supported in Mutter. So there's like an issue about it, but the work just hasn't been done yet. Separate from that, they do actually have some issues with the cursor shape protocol. So unless these get addressed or it becomes such a unanimous protocol, they're basically forced to implement it. That's probably not going to happen. Key bindings are also an issue. Couldn't come up with an idea by looking at the code. Maybe we could have a common base class and have different implementation per backend instead of a bunch of if not is Wayland compositor return all over the place. Key bindings are a hard one because you have the question of both built-in keybinds, the keybinds for actually controlling GNOME, and then the keybinds for controlling applications outside of GNOME. And those ones are a much bigger problem to deal with. There is work being done on desktop portals and all of that sort of stuff, but the problem then is having applications actually support the solution you need that, otherwise the solution you've made doesn't actually do anything. And it's very much a chicken and egg problem. Someone needs to do the portal so that someone can go and add support for the portal. But who's going to take the first step and actually get something done? Now, there has been some work in the way of addressing this. This is one of the earlier merge requests that got superseded by this one right here. This one actually did get merged, but it's still a long process of filling in all the gaps. Now, this one probably should have been done a long time ago and probably wasn't that big of a deal anyway. Error out when Wayland slash X11 specific backend options are used and the corresponding backend is disabled at build time. So if you don't have the ability to use the X11 side, don't let you use the X11 options. <laughs> I don't, I can't imagine that's that many things that would need to be fixed. Like there can't be that many options which are not available on both sides. But I guess by having less, it might make them harder to spot. Or maybe as you address different pieces you know are affected by that issue, you don't realize what few are still left that need to be addressed. Untangle meta window shared new, as it takes X11 slash Wayland specific arguments, and there probably should be two variants in a post construction common function. Again, splitting the X11 and Wayland stuff into two separate things. Make sure there are specific CI jobs, continuous integration jobs for the different configurations. So if you build with Wayland or you build with X11 only, 
have the ability to make sure those actually work the way they should be working, separate from doing all of the other stuff for building everything. Now again, this is not every single change, and a lot of these individual changes also rely on further things listed here down below. There is a lot of moving pieces to make a change like this actually possible when it wasn't designed like this from the ground up. And whilst there is this desire to generally move away from X11, not even just in the downstream distro projects, but in the upstream desktop itself, GNOME developers are quite aware of things that just are not actually ready. Things that actively do break the experience of users who cannot do anything else. The main thing being accessibility. This is a well understood problem and when Fedora was considering dropping the X11 side by default on their version of Workstation, there were people from GNOME that got involved to say, hey, accessibility is a really big deal, we know this isn't there yet, and hold off until that is done. That, I think, is still one of the major, major blockers, and probably a big reason why there isn't more discussion about fully dropping the X11 side anyway, because... The accessibility stack is really old, it needs a lot of work, and there is work being done, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and, you know, it's a whole mess to get things dealt with. Now, I shouldn't be the one to ever make predictions in the Linux world. I am horrible at doing so, and seem to massively undershoot or overshoot any time I make a number. So, maybe I shouldn't give one, but... If I had to make a guess, I would assume that sometime probably in the next five or so years, both Plasma and Gnome are going to be legitimately considering fully disabling X11 support, or if not disabling it, at least hiding it behind a build option that you have to say, I know this is no longer being supported, but... I want to use it anyway. Basically, you have to actively choose to compile back in the X11 support, otherwise it's just not going to be there. And then a few releases after that, that's when it'll be fully gone. Am I certain it's going to happen? No. Is it going to happen eventually? I don't see how it doesn't. But, what do you think? Do you think the Wayland future is inevitable? Do you think that something else is going to come along that stops it? And are you already using Wayland now? I would love to know. Personally, I've been using it, and I don't really have any issues anymore. But, let me know your thoughts. So, if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly Barapay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and who do you think will be first to fully drop X11? I'd love to know.